Hello again, this is Michelle Labar from Labar Dressage Training Center at Vulture Farm. Um, I was asked to explain how I hold the double bridle reins, um, and so I'm going to try to do that quickly now. Um, with two sets of reins, I happen to just have the same set of rein that I took apart to make it look like two. Typically, the snaffle rein is thicker and the curb rein is thinner. Um, in this case, they're both the same thickness because they're actually the same set of reins. But um, the way I typically do it myself, I prefer to keep my snaffle rein in my traditional finger um, configuration so that I already have the training and the use of that feel to the horse's mouth with the snaffle and I don't like to change that up for myself. And then I cross the, the curb rein inside of the snaffle and I put that between my um, middle and ring finger. Um, and so I traditionally carry, depending again on the, the weight of the horse's mouth, but I try to carry the rein so that the snaffle rein is set at this knuckle here and then the curb rein is up on the uh, sort of the furthest knuckle forward. Um, and then my reins I will either set directly next to each other at the top or they will overlap a little bit with the with the snaffle over the curb rein. Um, but I find that if I have a narrow enough, there's my cat, a narrow enough set of uh, reins, I can hold my thumb and forefinger over the both of the reins and then if I need to press more towards the curb for some moment or more towards the snaffle, I can just kind of uh, joystick my thumb around um, in order to do both reins. So I have a hold to both reins and then I can switch around. Typically I have a little more pressure to the snaffle rein because I like to let the curb rein rest a little bit loose in my hand. Uh, and then of course if I need to, to take a firmer hold of the curb, I can I can uh, switch my the angle of my thumb over. Um, so that is how I like to carry the reins. Um, you can also uh, carry the reins on your pinky and on your ring finger uh, in either this configuration, so it would be snaffle on the pinky and then um, curb in the ring finger position. Um, or you can switch that so that you have the, um, they don't cross and you have the snaffle on the ring finger and then the curb on the pinky finger, except I believe that would come in the opposite way. Um, and so in that case, the curb rein is not crossing underneath the snaffle rein. So right now they have switched positions. So that, I have used that, particularly the not crossing approach for a horse that does not want me using my fingers much. So a more steady handed type of horse, um, I find that the my use of the pinky is less effective, um, so it's, met, it's better at stabilizing. Whereas if I'm trying to use um, a dialogue type style of hand, um, then I find that that work happens better with the, the, the rein sort of pressed towards the outside of my hand and um, then I still have my conversational approach, whereas when I'm in my pinky, um, I find that I cannot um, say as much without moving more of my wrist or more of my hand. So that, if I have a quiet, quiet hand type horse that does not want me dialoguing much with their mouth, just a meeting position, this is sometimes a better better hold but my more comfortable position is this one and again uh, the thickness of the rein may impact how you set those reins over one another. Um, I hope this was helpful if you have any questions or I need to make something more clear uh, um, I will do that. This is Michelle Labar from Labar Dressage Training Center at Vulture Farm and of course you can find us on Facebook and now on my YouTube channel. Thanks so much.